Hi, my name is Palabo. Here's another flashback while I'm working on the next season. This was recorded in November 2016, where I spent a few days in Kuala Lumpur, and then two weeks in the beautiful island of Langkawi. You can join me playing badminton in Kuala Lumpur with my new local friend, and getting my ass kicked, and talking functional chocolate. Yeah, that is a thing. I'm also talking about religion and much more with my second host. And then I get attacked by a monkey. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Yeah, well, but, 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 I'm, but I'm gonna get my ass kicked again. Yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, are you serious? Meet Pale Bo, a digital nomad from Denmark on an epic journey around the world. At the age of 50, he made a bold decision. He sold everything, his house, his car, his furniture, and set out with a quest to visit every single country in the world, documenting everything along the way. This is the Radio Vagabond Podcast. This episode of the Radio Vagabond podcast is sponsored by Hotels25.com. Hotels25.com searches all the top travel sites to find the best deals on more than 430,000 hotels around the world. Hotels25.com, it's best price guaranteed. After my days in Singapore, I got on a plane and headed north to the capital of Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, or KL as the locals call it. 31 million people live in Malaysia and 1.7 million here in KL. Kuala Lumpur means muddy confluence. The confluence of two muddy rivers, Gombak River and the Klang River. The skyline of the city is well known for the two skyscrapers, Patronas Twin Towers. From 98 to 2004, they were the highest buildings in the world, before Taipei 101 took the title and since then Burj Khalifa in Dubai, two buildings that I've already admired. Today the Petronas Towers are still considered the highest twin towers in the world. I found an apartment on Airbnb that's around 10 kilometers from the towers downtown. But taxis and the SkyTrain is cheap here, so it's really not a problem. And this apartment is one of the coolest apartments I've been in on this trip. With a swimming pool, supermarket, lots of restaurants and bars. And then the apartment itself is amazing. It's in two floors with a staircase up to a loft bedroom and a bathroom and an incredible view from the balcony. I put some pictures and a small video presentation of my apartment on the radiovagabond.com and a link to the Airbnb site if you're ever in KL and need a place to stay. And then my host, Leek, turns out to be a super cool guy. When he heard that I was from Denmark, he automatically thought that, well, I must be good at badminton, coming from a country with proud traditions in the game and a lot of great badminton players like Peter Gale, or Peter Gate as he calls him, and then the Malaysian national coach Morten Frost is also a Dane. That's why he asked me, just when I was checking in, if I wanted to join them at their traditional Friday night badminton. Every Friday he meets with a bunch of friends to play badminton and then after that they go to a club and get some cold beers. So, badminton and beers. Now, there's a concept. So, of course I said yes and a couple of hours later, Leek picked me up. <laughs> Your name is Leek? Leek. Actually, it's my... Uh, it's, it's translation name for my own Chinese name. My, my Chinese name is actually Lin Hong Leek. Ling Hong Ling. Lie, yeah. yeah. So Lie is actually my, my, my last name. Okay. A lot of Chinese names, they choose an English name, like Steve or Joe yeah. or uh, Penny. Uh, I, I, I don't have a Christian name. If when somebody call, call me, my surname is Lim. When they ask me a Christian name, then I'll tell them Lie Lim. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, you are obviously my Airbnb host. 
And I love you for that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Because that apartment is so amazing. Uh, and you've invited me. I just came this afternoon and you invited me to, in a few words, badminton and then beers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it, right? right? Yeah. Uh, badminton is actually a, a national game in, uh, in Malaysia. In Denmark as well? Yeah, yeah Denmark is very good in badminton. And then uh, beer is an uh, international language. <laughs> so, so, uh, Peter Gade and uh, Carlsberg. Peter Gade and yeah, yeah, and Carlsberg. Okay, well, you can see Carlsberg everywhere in in Malaysia. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to. Is that something you do every Friday night? Yeah, uh, it's a regular game every Friday night from eight thirty to eleven. Okay. So I'm not inter interrupting your game. Uh, no, 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 no. We we always uh, welcome friends. Uh, sometimes we uh we bring some friends uh, from all over the world. Sometimes they bring some Japanese friend and then from Hong Kong, no. uh, different pl place uh, play. But I know what you're thinking. You just because I'm Danish doesn't mean I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we we expecting all Danish oh, is good in badminton. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Which 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 uh, players from uh, the Danish badminton do you know? Uh, Peter Gade, Jorgensen. Denmark is the first European country which won the Thomas Cup. This is the highest. It's like the World Cup of uh, badminton. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you do you have some good players, Malaysian? Yeah, Malaysia. We have the world number one single player, which is uh, Lee Zhongwei. Yeah, Li Zhongwei, and then we have a couple of us uh, doubles player, and then we just won uh, Olympic silver medal for single men single, men doubles, and also mixed doubles. Okay. Yeah. So, so badminton is big here. Badminton is big here. Yeah. Um, so football is also big here, but we really? are very we are very bad in football. We <laughs> like it. Yeah, that's the <laughs> important like thing. It. Yeah. <laughs> Now we're gonna play some badminton. Yeah, we are going to play some badminton. My game was not impressive. I was no Peter Gale or Morty Frost. Every time I was playing, me and my team got our ass kicked. But I truly did the best I could and it was very fun. So was going to a club in KL with a group of Lake's friends till the early hours in the morning. After only a few days in KL, I went on to my next stop here in Malaysia, the island of Langkawi in the northern part of the country. Here in Langkawi, I'm staying at a resort. It is so nice that I've decided to prolong my stay here with another week. The apartment that I'm living in is built on pillars above water. So when I'm sitting in the balcony facing west, I got the best sunset. And if I look down, I look into the water. I also made a small video of this place that you can see in my YouTube channel and on the radiovagabond.com. Also, I put a link to this Airbnb site, because even though it is a part of a resort with swimming pools, bars and restaurants, the units here have different owners, and I found it on Airbnb. I also became good friends with my host here. He owns three units as sort of an investment. One morning he showed up at my apartment with some local food called Lipat. I want to record with you, explain what that is. A croissant is a croissant anywhere in the world, yeah. whether it's uh, in five six star hotel in Paris or in KL or Tokyo, New York, or in your country's Denmark, capital yeah. city, yeah. Uh, Denmark. Right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know about other people, but when I travel to any country, I want to know what the people eat, how the people live. Yeah, the local food. Yes, local food. Uh, that's why. Normally, I will take my guests to the night market mm -hmm. or morning market. Then you see, oh, this. Fresh fish. We don't have this type of fish in our country. Things like that. Yeah. And the way I see it, I see you people from temperate countries. You fly down here, hop off the plane, 
hop into the taxi or whatever, and then you get to the hotel, and then you go and sunbathing on the beach. And that is all. And after that, you reverse the thing, arrive at your country back. But then I say, what about, don't you want to taste what the people eat? What the, how the people live? What are they doing for a living daily? Mm-hmm. What about the farmers? They are planting paddy, wet paddy and dry paddy. So you're wondering, yes, you have heard of water buffalo. Does it look like a cow or bison or what? Get close to the people. And these people are friendly people. Mm-hmm. And they're, sometimes they feel honored when you're asking, oh, how, how do you do this? Yeah. I used to eat rice. Huh? Yeah. So, but I've never seen it done. Ah, like that. Or maybe only TV. You cannot touch it. It's not yet up and, to that. And smell it. Yeah. Touch, smell, um, experience is yeah, another. Exactly, yeah. yeah uh-huh. What I tried to, what I tried to do when I was in uh, Taiwan, I yeah. went to a night market with uh, a local couple. Uh, yeah. Uh, and and they showed me all the different weird food. Yes. Uh, uh-huh. And to me, it was weird, like pig's blood uh, yeah. and uh, uh-huh. and bl- and yes. Uh, and some three. some I, 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 I tasted it. Uh, some of it I liked. Some of it I didn't like, but I tasted it. Yes. The, the only the only time when I've said no was when I was in the Philippines, and they asked me, "Would you like some balut?" And I, balut. Yeah, you know the the egg with the, the, egg, uh, the with almost the hatch yeah, yeah yeah yeah. Oh. Watching the photos only, I think I'm not going oh, to do it. No, yeah. I, no, I, I simply could yeah, not and, do it. And we we are amazed, but how come they call it a delicacy? Yeah. Where can we can hardly touch it actually mm. okay so what we see on TV and only when you say Asian you think Asian must look like Chinese this kind of face uh, like that but when you get to Taiwan and you get to other Thailand Laos Cambodia Malaysia Indonesia then you see when you go to the night market or the morning market no, the food is a different there are many type of Asians actually that is what tourism is all about. What I try to do on this trip is really get into the local culture as much yes. as I can. And I also, uh, now I stay in this in, in this beautiful mm. place, but sometimes I stay at uh, couch surfing where I stay with yeah. the locals. Yeah. I, I did that, for instance, in uh, Moldova, where I stayed with a, a, a local guy yeah. who was unemployed. Yeah. And, uh, and it, it was the best experience because you really get to feel the local culture. Yeah, when you get to meet all these people who have been unemployed, then you really get in touch with the real blood and vein of the people. You go down there, you see how they survive. Okay, okay you were at the night market last night and ah. here you are with something that's wrapped in some kind of leaf <laughs> or what is it? Make a lucky guess then. The, um, it's like a Christmas present. Uh, <laughs> it, it's 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 wrapped in a leaf. It's uh, what kind of leaf do you think it is? Um, I let you smell it. Mm. I would guess it's uh, banana leaf. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and it's it's around uh, one inch by uh, one inch by four. four I, think. I think. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. And what is inside? Yeah, some, I bet. I bet some kind of rice or it's not pig blood. If it? you want. To uh, first one thing I'm a Muslim uh, Muslim There are things That we are forbidden to eat okay. after, after tasting pig bloods I I'm think about Converting to Muslim <laughs> <laughs> Yeah Yeah, <laughs> yeah Okay It's not easy To be a Muslim But no. sometimes You know you know, Like what Kennedy Used to say Why we want to go to the moon Because it's hard To go there Exactly Yeah, yeah. If not everybody Is there already yeah. Before us Yes So uh, thrill come When we are doing Something different Something hard Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay yeah, Let's open it this thing in Malaysia is called lepat. Lepat. Uh-huh. Lepat. But nicely wrapped in banana leaves. Yeah. Okay, open it like this. Banana leaf, and what's inside? Uh-huh. Mm. Ah, uh, what yeah, is what, it, is what, it? what is that? Uh, some kind of fish? Uh-huh. <laughs> no? no. This is banana plus wheat flour plus a little sugar. It's banana. So it's uh, all banana. Yeah, so wrapped in banana. Yeah, I I like to take fruits right early in the morning, whether fresh fruit or fruit derivatives like this. Okay. Is the banana mushed up before? Yeah, mushed up, and then um, they combine it together with wheat flour and um, a bit of sugar, mm-hmm. uh, and then wrap it nicely like this, and then they steam it. Mm-hmm. So no oil involved. Mm. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you want to have a taste. I have another. You can take it all actually. 
And don't worry, it's just fruit. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. How does it taste? Taste a, a lot of like the banana and 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 yeah, the banana mm, taste is there. Mm. Uh, but this one is nice. It's done by looking at this. I know that uh, this is done by somebody who is expert in doing it. When I put my teeth in it the first time, I thought, um, I don't know if I'm gonna like, like this. Something like a jelly but like I, that. I, but I really like it. I really like it. Yeah. This is very nicely done. Lepat, lepat pisang. Pisang means banana. Banana lepat. So, so, could you just for the yeah. for the tape say say your name uh, oh. and and who you are, how old you are, and stuff like that? Okay, a lucky guess again. How old do you think I am? Um, twenty-seven. <laughs> are you trying to <laughs> claim compliment me or make me making me feel good or what? Um, Honestly, looking at me, how old do you no, think? No, no, you're no, you're. It, no, well, that was that was my guess after seeing your pictures. Now I've seen you yeah. in real uh-huh. life. I would yeah. say sixty-four. No, oh. <laughs> no, no, you're uh, forty-two. I'm fifty-one. Just like uh, the recent October. Uh, I'm fifty-one. Okay, nineteen sixty-five. How old am I? Mm, I think you are forty-five. I think. Uh, I'm fifty-two. Oh, fifty-two. Just yeah. one year yeah. ahead of me. I just turned fifty-two, actually. Yeah, that, No, when you are not obese, you need yes, mm. you feel good. Oh, thank you. Uh, but, but from <laughs> no. the heavy run, yeah. <laughs> if you can cut on that, you get I think five years younger. Yeah, you look yeah. five younger. Okay, I'm Sulaiman. Okay, um, actually owning this uh, the three play, uh, units of a sweet apartment here is an investment actually. This is not my real core business. My real core business is chocolate, but I'm not producing ordinary chocolate. I'm producing functional chocolate. Functional, functional chocolate. That means a chocolate or uh, uh, like this. I can turn it into a functional lapat also. Functional cake, uh-huh. okay. A functional ice cream. That means you put ingredient in there that serve a function. Uh, the chocolate. I have four types of chocolate. One is for good uh, brain or memory performance. What would you, what would you put, put in? In certain herbs. All the chocolate I'm making, I put herbs, certain type of herbs into the chocolate, and it bring the desired purpose. So this Indian pennyworth or Centella asiatica, uh, the Latin name for it, scientific name for it, it since they are, it has been known for centuries as the brain tonic. Mm-hmm. So you add it into chocolate, your chocolate serve a purpose for making uh, your brain perform better. Okay. So for nine years we've been helping a toddler, six months old toddler. They started uh, giving it to their school going children. Woo! They perform better now. But then I have. Parents telling us, that, "No, I've given it to my one year old, one and a half years old, and also six months old baby." Huh? I said, "Really? You're very good. You're very articulative." That's how I have to base it on people experience. Cause I have no kid on my own. I'm not married. I'm single. That's how uh, this uh, cho- uh, chocolate minda. Chocolate minda means brain chocolate. Good tasting medicine. Yeah. Is it only sold here in Malaysia? Uh, it has been uh, Malaysia, Brunei, Singapore, and Indonesia. Uh, if there are people who are interested to take it to their countries, you can. I'll put a I'll put a link in the show yes, notes. Yeah. So put a link, but you have to translate it because our Facebook page and, and our website are in in the Malay language. Sulaiman also makes functional chocolate that's good for the skin and slows down the aging process. It's for your skin, you know, to reduce wrinkle, slow down your aging process, things like that, make, making your skin stronger. The third one is a chocolate for women that makes them look better and their boobs to grow bigger. I kid you not. Um, it helps women to look younger mm-hmm. they boost their breasts making it like young girl's breast young woman's breast mm-hmm. their buttocks and, and make their body shapely like a woman's body shape mm. not like a man or semi man I I bet a lot of women would like the thought eating chocolate could make their boobs look greater yeah <laughs> in Japan they've done it they, they call it the F cup cookies you know F cup make it bigger yes this thing also can make breasts bigger Remember, I've been selling it for seven years. So there's a brain chocolate, a skin chocolate, and a boob chocolate. <laughs> the last of his four products is called uh, Mama Milky. 
Mama Milky. Mama Milky. Okay. So this chocolate is for those breastfeeding mothers to enhance their milk production. Uh-huh. So I mix certain herbs, certain plants into chocolate and in turn into a chocolate who can help breastfeeding mothers get more milk. Today, Sulaiman is doing well. He owns three units in a resort here in Langkawi and a chocolate factory. But he tells me that he comes from a poor background as a son of a rubber tapper. Yes, I've counted coins to pay my rent. I've been through it all. And I was the son of a poor rubber tapper. My mother and father tapped rubber. And thought rubber we do... Say that again? Rubber tapping. You know? Rubber tap. Yeah, to yeah. get rubber latex from the tree, yeah, yeah. and from that you get all those rubber product, tires, balloons, uh, and most importantly, surgical gloves. So how is that exactly done? You 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 put a small thing on the tree that will collect uh, it's, the. It's like this. So they make a a cut on one side of the tree, and then put a spout there and put a cup, and they collect the latex. Uh, so that's rubber tapping. But but you come from a a, a, a poor family. Yeah, rubber tapping is not a lucrative business. <laughs> it's poor people tap rubber, and agriculture people anywhere in the world they are mostly poor people. It's the middleman who makes lots of money. So you know how much you're paying for surgical glove or uh, uh, certain tires. But rubber now costs what a kilo of rubber lamb is around zero point three, zero point four US dollars, <laughs> something it, like it that. It takes a l- lot of dripping in cups. Yeah. At least three or four hours like that. That's why farmers are mostly poor people. But tapping rubber in my family, in my parents, it's not like other rubber, rubber tapers, Malaysia. We started rather late. They started sometimes at 6 a.m. But we came back at 6 p.m. So almost 12, 14 hours of work. That's working, my parents, every day, day in, day out. No, I have. Good so were you, were, you, were you sort of destined to be a rubber tapper yourself? I break yeah. away from the... <laughs> the way of living of my family yeah. yeah I broke away from it In Malaysia at that time In the 70s 60s, 70s When you are good in school The government will pluck you From those rural areas And send you to boarding school uh-huh. Special boarding school Where normally only uh, Affordable by the rich yeah. But the government will sort pay of a, Sort of a scholarship From the government Yeah Scholarship Or oh, they simply put it there And you study for almost free and they will take care of everything. That's how they want to uplift the living standard of rural people. Get their son and daughters to study well so that later on they can become doctors, engineers. Or chocolate factory. Yeah. Okay. And we were part of uh, Malaysia at that time. Malaya or Malaysia was part of the British Empire. So I went to boarding school in another state. At, at what age? Twelve. Okay. Eleven something actually. Yeah. Uh, I was rather lucky actually. Allah God determines it that way. He starts laughing when I ask him about his personal personal dreams dreams for the future. future (laughs) I have a friend here in Langawi Island who's been saying to me for so many times already, I should retire and I'm thinking of retiring. But you're only 51. Yeah, but like I said, this train, high-speed train is moving. I cannot simply jump off it. And then you're thinking about jumping. Yeah! Uh, sometimes we have ambition, you know. If I can go on and do it very well, my ambition is what well, now? Is to uh, to make the company very big so that it can be a charitable company, so that a certain percentage of the income will be used to do charity actually. Because however rich you are, as Bill Gates, as the Sultan of Brunei, or King of Saudi Arabia, how many plates can you eat for lunch? How many pieces of pizza can you eat for dinner? A chicken chop? How many? Not that much, right? After the second helping, you got enough already. So, uh, there must be a reason why sometimes Allah the God give you something. You know, that's why I went at length um, t- telling you about my life story so far. Because it's a, sometimes when God show you a path, just follow it. He knows better. We are just mere mortals, <laughs> mere humans. Yeah, God knows better. As you see, once you have enough for yourself, it's, there must be a reason sometimes why God, Allah, give you money. When you got enough, what else you do with your money? One thing that can pre- shield you from the hellfire is sadaqah or donation or charity. 
Because our prophet say in the here after the day of judgment, those rich people have a hard time explaining what they have done with their wealth when they were living in this mortal world. So actually, wealth is not something for you to show off. Or, or yeah, you can enjoy it up to a certain point. After that, you just looking. It's rather stupid, what right? By now, you've heard Sulaiman mention Allah and God a few times. Remember that we're in a Muslim country, and I could feel that he was religious. When I ask him directly, he says that on a scale from one to ten, he's probably a three. He doesn't feel like a good Muslim. He skips prayers once in a while, or as he says, I'm a lazy prayer. Nevertheless, what happens now is that we have a long talk about religion after telling him that I'm an atheist. Some of the things that came up in this conversation was the Islamic view on homosexuality and the evolution theory. Uh, if I were to rebut your opinion of being atheist, eh, then who's putting you through her life? Because you don't believe in God, right? No. Then it might be yourself. Huh? So, who made that? Yourself? Ah, there must be somebody, you right? Nature. Why must there be somebody? Really, nature. Then how come on on the moon there's no water? It should be water, what? Nature. Why is it that on Earth there's water but not on the on on the moon? Is it that? Because it's nature, it's natural to have a planet to have water and the water become uh, comes vegetation. Hmm? <laughs> and you're saying that's God? Actually, in Islam, there are just two classes of. Thing, uh, of something in this world, mm-hmm. the creator and the mm-hmm. createe. Mm-hmm. But what so if I what if I what, what if I'm the opinion that uh, the reason that things work here mm-hmm. is evolution and uh, the the way that the strongest species survive. All in all, it was a very interesting discussion about two different ways of looking at the world and the way it was created. All with total respect for the other person's opinion. Even though it's the Islamic belief that being an atheist is very sinful. Because as a Muslim, honestly speaking, to be an atheist is very <laughs> sinful. You don't, de- you don't even recognize that God exists. Your Creator. It's just like you don't even recognize your parents made you born into this world. It's like that. No, don't worry. I'm not angry at you. It went on for a very, very long time. For a lazy Muslim, as he calls himself, he was really putting an effort into telling me about Islam. Honestly, at one point I felt that it was almost too much. But listen to what Sulaiman tells me here. The reason he's telling me about Islam is not to convert me. He gave me information so that he, when standing on Judgment Day, can honestly say that at least he told this Danish atheist about the good things about being a Muslim, that he could honestly say that he didn't miss the chance. At least he would be able to say that he did what he could to inform me. I felt that it was really because he liked me and he would feel sorry if I would burn in hell just because I hadn't discovered the real God. Yeah. Do you feel I'm 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 lost and I'm missing out on some of the good stuff? Uh, That's why I yeah. say I'm I'm not pulling you to Islam. No. I'm giving you information yeah. so that in the year after, when you know before God, the angel said, "You miss your chance." Remember when you met Palebo? Remember? Yes. He stayed two weeks at my place. Wow, very nice guy. <laughs> yes. Do you say anything about, to him about Islam? Why? Mm, that's why he died a non-believer. Mm-hmm. Because so that in the year after, if they mention you, I've done my responsibility. I told him. Oh, already. you've done a lot. You, you, yes, <laughs> and he doesn't believe in the thing. He's steadfast, holding on to his belief. He's what that's his chosen path. Mm-hmm. Then God say, yeah, it's not your your. The island of Langkawi is really, really a nice place. I rented a car and went to the Sky Bridge. It's a really unique bridge where you can walk above the treetops and get an amazing view of the whole island. Truly a unique experience. I also went to a crocodile farm and saw a lot of monkeys at the roadside. <laughs> at one point I was almost attacked by a monkey and quickly got back in the car. This episode of the Radio Vagabond podcast is sponsored by Hotels25.com. 
Hotels25.com searches all top travel sites to find the best deals on more than 430,000 hotels around the world. Hotels25.com, it's best price guaranteed. If you like this podcast, please subscribe in iTunes or the podcast app on your smartphone. You can see pictures, watch videos, and read much more on the radiovagabond.com. Palais can be reached for interviews and public speaking gigs on mail at the radiovagabond.com. Almost two weeks in Lankarvi. That was really, really nice. Make sure that you also put Lankarvi on your bucket list. But now I'm off to my next stop, which is going to be Thailand. And I'm so looking forward to that. My name is Palabo, and I got to keep moving. See you.